casting the shadow of doubt where I'm just shining through it. I'm like, there's no way like there's, I, I know I can specialize in men's hair. Like you can't tell me that I can't do that. So it was like, I like, that's where I kind of had to split off and kind of do my own thing. Cause I can't be around people that are going to like doubt what I see, you know? Yeah. I, I want to dive into a little bit about, so your thoughts on mentors, right? There's a lot of people that are going to look at those situations in two ways. One people or one person would say, it's best to go out and just figure it out completely on your own, develop your own path, make your own mistakes, learn from those mistakes and find your own way. Right. And then there's other people that are going to follow in the path of the mentor, pretty much repeat everything that they do. And then over time they can kind of hone their craft and, and find out what works for them. You uh, seem to chose the mentor route. Yeah. Is that w- if you were to go back in time and give recommendations to someone watching, what, what, which side do you more fall on? Would you say? Um, I just, I would, I would go back and do the exact same thing. Um, I, there's not one thing I would change. There's definitely pros and cons. I think for the type of person I am, I need to kind of be in it and see it. And, um, I learn with my eyes pretty much. Like I need to, I, I can't get it from a, uh, you know, a book black and white. I, I can't, it's just not how I learn. So, yeah. um, going back, I would definitely, you know, Marvin just, go back with him and do it all over again. Cause he was, a, he's a phenomenal hairstylist. He's, he has a lot of women's hair. He does men's hair, but the way he cuts hair, I, I would have never learned that going anywhere else. He's just so his personalization through his haircuts. And, um, so you think starting with a foundation is probably the best way to go in your opinion versus yeah. just going into it blind and trying to find your own way. Yeah. I think I had a little bit of a head start on it. I had some raw talent, like already cutting hair before going into my apprenticeship, Yeah, which allowed me to, when I started seeing, okay, Marvin cuts hair like this, Nancy across from Marvin cuts the hair like this. and I cut hair like how I cut hair. I like how Marvin does that, but I really like how Nancy like sections hair like that. So mm-hmm. I was like marrying what Marvin was doing with that with a combination of what Nancy was doing and I was like trying to do it on my own, like kind of make my own version. And it wasn't everything that Marvin was going to work for me. And it wasn't everything that Nancy was going to work for me, but it was like a little bit of what he was doing mixed with a little bit of what she's doing with a little bit of what Janan was doing. You know, it was, it was kind of like I was getting all these different ways. Like there's a million ways to skin a cat. There's like that saying, you know, there's a million ways to get through a haircut. I mean, there's even times where I cut your hair and like, Whoa, I've never seen you cut my hair like this. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, hey, there's a hundred ways I can go about this haircut, you know? Yeah. So. No, that's cool. I mean, I, maybe I, I want to I wanna talk a little bit more about maybe where you got that humbleness to be open to all these new opinions and all these other people that you admired and wanted to learn from, right? I mean, there's so many people that are so close-minded and shut off to learning from others. And it sounds like you were willing to take advice and, and learn from anybody, whether it was a female, male, if they did male hair, if they did yeah. female hair, it didn't matter. You were taking advice from anybody, whether you applied it or not was your choice. But where do you think you got that humbleness to realize, Hey, I, I've got a lot to learn here. Um, I think I just growing up, I was just a good listener. You know, I think, uh, I was like the little kid that always wanted to be around the adults and it was as really little, my dad would be like, Hey, you know, be seen and not heard right now. You know, you got nothing good to say right now. Just, but if you want to be around, like my parents are playing poker with their friends. Like I was just always a good listener. Um, and I knew that, um, like there's people out there that are just better than you at certain things. And like when I wanted to learn golf, like who am I going to watch? Tiger Woods. Like, why wouldn't I watch Tiger Woods? He's the best. Like I want to, I want to swing like Tiger Woods. I, I I would, I remember like learning golf and just wanting to swing the club like him. I would just pretend like I was, you know? And when I got into hair, it was that the same thing applied. Like everyone in the salon has a clientele. They're working They're They have their lives. Like they've, they've built things for themselves. Marvin's got a whole family. I, he's, he's super busy all days, two clients at once. So I, I just knew like, okay, let's, there's a method to their madness. Let's figure it out. Let's learn it. Let's, let's take, let's take what, what you can from, from each and every one of these people that are working here. So, um, it just came from just being a good listener and, um, understanding and, and that there's going to be people other that are better than you, but 
It doesn't mean that you can't take something from them and learn from it and, and modify it, make it your own. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like it's not going to be like cut and copy paste. What, what Joe does is going to work for you. You know, it might be a little bit of what I do with a little bit of what someone else does. And then all of a sudden you just created your own thing, you yeah. know? So no, I think that's very important. I think it's very important. I think the biggest thing that, like I said, I, it's so, so helpful is the fact that you are willing to be open to all these other opinions. Cause again, yeah. so, so many people get so close minded on this is the only way to do it. And I have to do it my way and all these things. And I think it's a great start when you don't know. And there is a lot of insecurity and not sureness and, and all that. It's good to start with a proven method that works. And then you can yeah. kind of be a little more risky and figure things out on your own after that point. So yeah, that's fantastic. All right. So you were with him for how long were you there? When you were doing your apprenticeship? I was there for like two and a half years. So the apprenticeship was about two years. Okay. And we talked a little bit before we started about like procrastination. So this is kind of like the big hurdle that was kind of like really holding me back. So um, I finished the apprenticeship and I got to go take state boards. So test for me, super anxious. There was a written portion and a practical portion. And, uh, I had to I had to go take this test and I just started to procrastinate it because I didn't feel like I was ready. I didn't feel like I was prepared. Um, so the salon wanted really really wanted me to take this test to kind of get going. They wanted me to get my own chair, get the license, and get going. And I was kind of like in this spot where I was making pretty good money at home. Mm -hmm. So you were doing you were kind of you were in that like comfort phase where it was like yeah. you had that thing so you're learning still at the salon you're doing okay at, yeah. at home yeah and at so the time i thought i was doing great at home yeah i'm like all right you know i don't even need to take this test i was just kind of in yeah. this i got in this like little zone of kind of getting a little too ahead of myself um which i i realized so that the salon actually ended up getting rid of me is what was what ended up happening they they said you know what joe um if you're not going to take your state board you got to just kind of leave the salon and it was kind of like a, a moment where it was like whew, I did not uh, see that coming it, it kind of it, that humbled me a little bit um, and then I, I had to take go and take the state board um, by myself and it's interesting you could but you you could have taken that two ways yeah right you could have said screw the boards I'm gonna go just cut hair on my own at, at the house what made you decide hey this is this has to happen this is the next step for me I, I think I put the test on too big of a pedestal. You know, I, I, I started thinking of this test as a, like it was bigger than it was. And I think what I did was I just had to take that, the idea of this test being this big monster and just be like, dude, this is like everyone does this. And I yeah. had to put myself in the mindset of like, dude, the lady at Great Clips that, you know, is – pretty much everyone in the hair business have, has taken this test. Yeah. Uh, they're the best – best of the best or like the worst of the worst. So if they can get through it, so can I. And I just took that, the idea of this test being this huge thing and I just made it something super small. And then I was able to just tackle it. That's exactly what I did. And I'm not someone who's good at studying. I'm not someone who's good at preparing for a test. And I, I got through it and I had my own ways of getting through it. It was through like practice tests online and um, it wasn't opening the book and reading the book. It was, it was my own way. Yeah. I, I had to figure it out. And the funny thing about my test the night before the test, it, it was the, uh, the practical portion. I was preparing all night, all day and all night, the Texas state board. Mm. The, the day before my test, I knew something was wrong because we kept getting, I was practicing with a friend across the street and uh, who, who took the state board and then we kept getting this portion. I said, this is wrong. She was, no, this is right. I got it right here. It's in front of me. So at 11 o'clock at night, I grabbed her phone. I scrolled all the way to the top and for about six hours, I was practicing how to pass the Texas state board. Oh my God. The night before I'm taking the Michigan state board. So I'm all backwards. I'm like the most anxious going to this test, but everything that you do in Texas, you do in Michigan. It's just in a different order. But the problem is you have to remember, you have to memorize the order. They don't tell mm. you, they say, okay, the first part of your test begins now. And like, you have to remember every single order you, and you have your huge bag of all your stuff you got to get, get out. So 
that was interesting. That was funny, and I got through it. And yeah. Oh, I, I have to say, though, that's a testament to, I think it's important to kind of look at how your path kind of formulates and how you end up where you are. And I think this is just another point that shows that you were on the right path because I can absolutely guarantee you based on everything you've told me about the car industry, if you had to do something above and beyond or difficult or outside of your comfort zone, you would have never done it because you didn't care enough. Yeah. You didn't care enough about that thing to be willing to go through the pain and struggle to figure it out. Yeah. But with this, somehow you were, even though it wasn't something you, you've said from day one, hate school, hate studying, hate yeah. all this stuff, right? But you were willing to do it for something you loved. Yeah. So I think that's a huge thing for people to pay attention to and note when they are looking for stuff. Your willingness to do hard things, I think, can be a really good sign, hey, I'm on the right track. Like if you're willing to push yourself and go beyond, I think that's a good sign that, hey, you're, you're heading towards something that really means something to you. Yeah, and, and, and with, with test taking and stuff like that, there was a willingness to fail. I was like, you know what? At this point, like I'll go take this test and I'll fail. And I going into the next time, like I'm going to take it again. I'm going to know what to expect. And there's there's kids I talk to all the time that have uh, an MCAT coming up or uh, the bar exam. And I think they do the same thing is they just kind of procrastinate and they hold off on it because they're making it this huge thing. And I'm like, go there and just take the test. Know what know what it's going to be like. You haven't even taken it. There's no practice test that's going to give you that same type of feel of actually getting sitting in, there in the desk and yeah. doing it. So go there and do it. Who cares? Fail, fail forward. That's how you're supposed to fail. Yeah. Every failure I feel like I've had in in my career has only launched me forward. And I think that's kind of where my mind goes. Is okay. It's it's always learn, learn from that. Do you think that was something that you learned from your dad? Yeah, absolutely. So in sports, and I mean, you you use that as a metaphor in the past where you're talking about catch the ball, catch the ball. Is that something that he was encouraging you on? Like, even if you don't, don't catch the ball, the world's not over. You're yeah. going to learn and get better the next time. Yeah, and if I, and if I fail, is, you know why you did that? Well, I didn't really do this. Exactly. You got to do it the right way. That's why there's a the right way to do things, you know? So it was almost like every time I failed with, with just about anything in life, I just realized, like, okay, there's a reason why. I, I didn't like, no one likes failing. No one likes doing something wrong or it's just, how do I never do that again? You know, yeah. how do I get in that same scenario and not fail? And you just learn, you learn from it. You know, don't let failures be like that. Okay. I didn't do well at that. So now I got to go do something else. Like, like if you had one sales job and it didn't work out for you, that doesn't mean sales in general are not for you. You know, yeah, <laughs> that you just learned that type of sales maybe isn't for you. That, that type of company or you know, even you weren't, you just weren't ready for it at that point in your time right. in, in your life. Yeah. It's not, it's not the other way around. So, I mean, that's a huge, that's a really valuable piece of, of feedback for people to take home. That's yeah. amazing. All right. So now we're in the point where, so you've, you've succeeded, you've gotten your, you've, you're, you've got that thing on the wall that finally those haters that are going to mm. say, Oh, you, you're not certified. You don't, you yeah. don't really know what you're doing and blah, 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 blah. You've got that piece of paper. Wonderful. Did it really do anything for you? And, and what what was the trajectory after that point? So the day I passed my state board, um, I was driving. It was on uh, it was in Southfield. So I was driving home and I I'm at a red light and I'm just refreshing my email and I get the email that I passed. And I'm like, this is I'm, I'm licensed. This is it. Like that big monstrous test that I was so scared about is over and I conquered it. Um, I went right on my phone online and started calling, uh, studio offices to, uh, rent my own place okay. right, right then and there. It was, I got the license and I'm going to get my place. And, um, that was Friday on Monday. I signed a lease on Tuesday. I started cutting hair in my, in my new studio, launched a website. And so this is all, were you 19, um, 20? I was actually... Oh, no, it was two and a half years you were in the impression apprenticeship. So yeah. So you would have been 20, 21? Yeah, I was just about, just about, just turned 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. That yeah. happened, that happened fast. Yeah. It's crazy what happens, but like, you look at what you, how you explain procrastination. Yeah. Two and a half years were realistically, not in a negative way, but you really didn't make much progress. You were yeah. kind of in your routine, in your groove, doing your thing, and then within call it a six, I mean, I don't even know, two months, you got your test. Yeah. 
you got a lease, you found out how to build a website and you're cutting hair. Yeah. It's unbelievable how much, how fast everything can happen when you really just take a step forward. And I think procrastination comes with comfort too. So like I got super comfortable with what I was doing and um, I really like to this day, I mean, I, I, I have my routine and it, it works and I'm doing really well for myself. Um, back when in those days when I was procrastinating everything, I thought, I thought I had it figured out. I thought it was, I was comfortable and I had to, I was so scared of that uncomfortable test that was coming mm-hmm. up and just kind of running right into it was just like like tackling that, being comfortable in that uncomfortable. At what point did you realize that you didn't want to be comfortable anymore? Because people can go through that for 40 years. Um, so at home, I was really limiting myself with the type of clientele I was taking on. So a lot of it was uh, people that I knew personally, and then it was like people that they knew personally. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm bringing people into the into the house. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sharing with my my sisters and my mom, and yeah. you know, it's 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 our fan, it's our house. You know, so my phone was blowing up with just so many numbers and people and. I was realizing to myself, I was like, you are like not tapping into like my full potential being here. I was getting, I was sick and tired of like my phone blowing up and me feeling like I can't like take on this clientele at home. I was, I was outgrowing what I built at home and it started to just kind of just take over where I was just, I was getting so fed up. I'm like, this is, I I have to do something. Yeah. You know, were you, were you doing a lot of thinking about your future at that point in time where you were like yeah. the trajectory of like, where can this go when I'm in this basement Yeah. versus where can I go yeah. outside of that? Yeah. I, I pretty much doubled my income with passing that test and like overnight. What, what's the process? I, I walk me through a little bit about what that looks like for you in terms of how you kind of envision your future and how, like how detail oriented do you get into it? And, what were you foreseeing for yourself that you're like, Hey, I got to change something or I'm not going to be able to get this life. Well, I think when I was at home, I was just, I wasn't able to provide the service that I wanted to provide to charge the premium. Yeah. Um, and then there's a certain level of respect that you don't get when you cut hair at home. Um, like you don't, people don't really tip it when you're working at home. They think, Oh, you don't have overhead. So, I mean, they're right They're You're kind of cutting hair for free. You're not paying for your spot. Um, and so I just always seen at that point where I seen my my vision was always charging a premium and I just wasn't. And I was getting to a point where I was like, dude, you're so worth it. You know, it, it's now or never. And um, so it's funny. I really haven't like put a crazy amount of thought into like what's next um, because the big one for me was was achieving to charge thirty five dollars for a haircut. That yeah. was like what I envisioned at eighteen years old, nineteen years old was charging thirty five, and now I'm charging forty five. Did you jump to that by the way? And Instantly, you, you, I was going to say. So you went from were you charging ten? I was charging. Um, I was charging ten, and then started charging fifteen. Okay, with the hopes of getting that, like someone giving me a twenty, going, ah, keep the five, uh, you know, um, a little marketing genius. And that was again, that was my dad. He was like, "Hey, are you still charging ten bucks?" I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Why don't you charge 15? I go, "I don't know. Why would I charge 15? He goes, "Because if someone gives you a twenty, they probably want that five back." I'm like, "Yeah, that's a pretty good idea," you know. And then, then I went from twenty to thirty-five. Yep, but that was a risk. I mean, there was a lot of people that are going from twenty to thirty-five, and they're going wow, all of a sudden I got to pay 15 extra more, you know? And I'm like, come check me out at the new studio. It's going to be a lot more of a service than it ever was at home. Um, just check it out. If, if you don't like it, you go somewhere else. It's okay. I mean, I'm one guy. I can't cut everyone's hair. I can't. I would I would love to, but there's, it's physically impossible. So um, I knew I was, I was going to tap into the clientele that was trying to get, get to me before I even touched their hair, like when I was at home. So... I knew like if the guys that were from, from the basement, were going to come to the studio and dude, I lost, I, I think I've told you this. I lost probably about, you know, a good 70% of the people that were in the basement. So I made that jump. Wow. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing all these new people. I'm seeing weeks of new people 
like one whole week is like every single day is like everyone that walks into the door was someone new to me. It was, it was a little nerve wracking. I mean, it was like, I completely like rebuilt and reshaped everything overnight. And then there was this emotion of like, how come the people that were with me the last four years are Mm -hmm. with me now? Yeah. But that's okay. Like I, I, I got myself out of that too, where I'm like, you can't focus on things you can't control. I can't control that. Yeah. And I think one of my earlier flaws was, was focusing on and getting too wrapped up in things I can't control. Like the people that are coming to you or why they're not coming back to you. All I know is I got to come in every single day with a positive attitude and a hundred percent effort in each and every single haircut that I do. I was going to, I was going to ask you if that, do you feel like, charging that level of premium transformed your ability to like, I got to show up and provide value for these people. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you put a higher ticket value on yourself, I feel like you have you, what other choice do you have? You have to show up at your best. You have to. Um, and, and in my business, I mean, someone can show up 10 minutes late and it can, it, it'll push me 10 minutes into the next appointment. Um, so I'm not like the next haircut, I'm not going to try to make up and like speed up and get this guy done so I can get back on schedule because they're paying for my time. They're going to yeah. get my time. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I'm 10 minutes behind. I'm on Hall Road, Hall Road Hayes. It's five o'clock. And, you know, there's a lot of times in that region I will fall 10 minutes behind, but I'm not going to take away from someone else's appointment or their, their experience just for so I can get myself back on, you know. Yeah. They're paying a premium. They're here to see me. I'm going to give them the time that they paid for, you know, and I'm going to show up because they deserve it. You know, that's incredible. I mean, that that really is cool to hear. I mean, I think that that seeing the way that you transformed and I'll triple down on what you say about you again, willing to sacrifice or invest or the same words that we've used for a number of things. You're willing to bite that bullet to lose a major, a large majority of your entire clientele in order to shed that past skin and turn into who you actually really want to be or what you envision for yourself. Yeah. It's incredible. Where do you think you got that courage? Like I said, like I just, I never doubted anything. There was never like a, I never really just had a shed. I just always just trusted that it was going to work. Like I just, do you think that came from how passionate and how much you truly cared about what you were doing? Yeah. It's like you wanted to make it work that bad. Yeah. I knew I wanted it bad. Um, I knew I was good. I mean, I don't know how many times I've cut someone's hair and like, this is the best haircut I've ever had. Yeah. You know, and I just like getting feedback like that. Like, how can it not work? Like, especially if I, if I stay on my A game and I, and I, and I show up every single day and like try to give someone the best haircut for them. Cause everyone's different. Your head's different than my head. Yeah. I'm an identical twin and we have two totally different hairstyles and, lifestyles where like maybe my hair wouldn't work for my twin brother, but like just to kind of custom fit a look for someone and just really just, just kind of like pour my heart in every single haircut, you know, um, without emptying my cup completely, you know? Yeah. I I just, I want to emphasize so much in this, how to me it becomes so apparent how important it is to do something you actually care about. Yeah. Cause it's just like you, I look at your story and it's like how many times over and over again that you just risked it all because you yeah. cared that much. Yep. You know, it's like I just don't see you, anybody having that level of, of success in, in anything without being so willing to fail, willing to do things that they wouldn't want to typically do, willing to do all the extra and above if they just don't care enough. Like it's not that important to you. So the people that go out and just do something for a paycheck, it's going to have, there's going to be an ending at some point. So it's just, I, I want to really emphasize for people watching, like how important it is to pay attention to what those things are that really do drive you and get you motivated and excited to be there at work. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I guess I do want to hear a little bit about what now that you, so you were doing that, you've repeated that process, I guess, for five years, you upped your price. When did you up your price again? Um, so, uh, I went from 35 to 40 and then from 40 to 45. Um, And um, I think 
like what I learned in my apprenticeship with increasing your price is you, you're definitely like, you're going to lose someone over five bucks. But then like younger me would focus on that. I'm losing people, you know, mm-hmm. and I can't, I really can't control that. It's, it's completely out of my control, like how someone feels or if they're going to continue to come or not. Um, but just knowing that you're going to attract people who um, want that premium. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have to let go of people that don't. And I, I kind of, like I said, I always focused on, you know, gaining versus losing. Um, and, and I think I'm not afraid to go up on price. And I'm at a point now where, like, I've gone up on price, I've lost people, and I don't have an opening right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if I was charging too much, you know, I probably wouldn't be as booked as I am. I think what's interesting, I I just brought the way that you're describing that made me think back to that quote that you said earlier about your clients are going to be a reflection of who you are. Yeah. And so let's think about you are not the same person that you were at 20. You're not the same person you were at 24. You're not the same person you were at 25. And you are continuing to grow and develop as a person. And so your value is growing up and In reality, if that's true, you keep rising your price based on you continuing to gain and grow and get better. And the people that are going to come to you are doing the same thing. And so you're going to continue. You're never going to have an issue because there's going to be people that are going to align with where you are in your life. Yeah. You might lose people that aren't on the same trajectory as where you are going in your life, but that's okay. It is. It's And that's what makes your business so great, in my opinion. That's a great way to put it, how you explained it. Yeah. And, you know, it's going up on, you know, it's... It's a hard thing to do. It is. You know, you think about a lot of stuff when when you're, like, changing how you charge and how you, you know, where you're going to go. And um, it's, it's steering the ship a little bit. But when you steer your ship just a little bit, you will end up so much further down the line. And it, it doesn't need to be a big drastic change. It's little changes that can really like just change over time. There's so much more. And I think that's kind of when I start like adding new things or changing the price a little bit, I just know it's like a little bit, it's incremental, but over the long run, it's going to be a lot better, you know? No doubt. No doubt. I know you haven't spent much time thinking about it, but you got me excited and thinking about it a little bit what thoughts have you had about joey snips 2.0 or what's coming in the future for you um or do you still are you still of the mindset of one step at a time we'll figure it out yeah i think one step at a time um my eyes and ears are always open for opportunity um I, i definitely have uh in in my business model have built a clientele that definitely appreciates it Um, so there's a lot of guys that will ask me like, Hey, do you see yourself in this big open barbershop with like eight guys working for you? I'm like, that would be great. You know? And then when I say that they go, Oh man, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. I'm like, why? Joe, I really like this environment, this one-on-one. It's not a busy environment. So I I definitely got to be, I think I would want to put myself in a position where, I'm still providing that same service and that same type of environment. Um, but it's, it could be on like the real estate end of it where I'm in charge of the actual building I'm in. I'm still doing the same thing mm-hmm. that I'm doing, but maybe that building is now mine. Got it. Or I'm, I'm, I'm part investor in, in something. No, that like makes that. a lot of sense. So I, I definitely see myself not changing my model specific, um, especially like, but, maybe how it runs on the back end. So like me being a, p- a part of uh, a, a building that I can help design, I can do something like that. So maybe you can get your psychology degree part-time like therapist <laughs> while you're talking to these people. You're like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I already am certified in <laughs> yeah, that, you yeah. know, um, but you got to be careful who you say that to. No, for sure. All right. Well, I like to wrap things up with a couple questions. So, We'll start, I want to start super narrow first. If someone wants to start in hair, they're 18 years old, seven, 16, like you were, maybe in their, their mom and dad's basement. Could be male, could be female. 
what would be your three pieces of advice to, to give them if you were just to if you were to just sit in a chair and stare at yourself at 16 years old and say this is where I'm at at 27 this is what I've learned this is what's going to save you a ton of time money energy what would those three pieces of advice be um I would say uh have confidence in yourself number one because you you if you have zero confidence in yourself, you just can't even get through uh, a haircut or uh, a hair color or whatever. You, you 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 have to have the confidence in yourself to do it. So, would you expand on how you could develop that if people don't have it? Um, just positive affirmations. Just really, just just kind of just knowing and and being okay. Like number one, being okay, being okay with failing. You know, like making a mistake. It's okay. You're gonna learn from it knowing that you're going to learn if you do make a mistake um, and just telling yourself like, I can do this. Yeah. If, if so-and-so can do it, so can I um, being inspired, I think is a big one. You, you got to get inspiration from other people and how they do things. And it could be someone on social media that you follow. You really love their work. It could be a coworker. It could be, you know, someone that, doesn't do hair at all but you need to be inspired by something and you need to stay inspired um because there's this zone of i'm inspired i really like the way this guy cuts hair whatever i'm learning and then a year goes by and you haven't gotten inspiration from anything else and you can kind of get complacent and kind of just fall into this like flat part of what you're doing so be inspired and stay inspired so kind of always look for, for something that's fresh and new and just learn and just kind of always be a student of it and never let go of that. And that's what's kept you doing in contrast to the individual you were talking about yeah. where, oh, it's repetitive, it's negative, it all, it's all the bad things, right? Yeah. When instead you're constantly looking for the positive. Yeah. What has this brought me? What can this continue to bring me? What yeah. can I do to get better and change, right? That's amazing. All right, um, let's go a little more broad now. So if you were giving it, I know those were, those could be applied to some other things. If you were to, to give advice to someone that is trying to find something that gets them going in the same way that, we, I mean, we talk so much about finding something you care about, right? What would be some, some pieces, piece of advice for someone that doesn't necessarily do hair, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what industry they're in. What would be three pieces of advice that you'd give to that person that's trying to figure out what that thing is? Um, what we talked about is like one day at a time. Um, staying humble, um, and, and, and not expecting much expectations can kind of crush you, um, in, in anything. Um, you shouldn't expect anything from anyone. Um, you have to, if you're going to start something, you're not going to, you're not going to start at a and end up at Z overnight. You have to get through it all. Yeah. Everyone who's, who is at the top of whatever it is that you're doing, if it's real estate, if it's car sales, if it's hair, if it's a successful gym, you got to go through it. You got to be, you got to be the, the one that's there late. You got to be the one that's vacuuming. You got to be, you know, it's, it, there's so much that goes into it and it, it doesn't, success does not happen overnight. So what, whatever it is, I, I don't know how someone really finds something, you know, but I think things can find people for sure. Like they could, you could be a kid that's like at a car wash and end up owning one one day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, we live in the greatest country ever. You can literally do whatever it is that you want to do, but it's, 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 it's one day at a time. It's hard work. It's determination and it's confidence. It's just going to every single day, not taking a day off mentally, mentally don't ever take a day off so that you are ready for whenever does an opportunity or situation that does intrigue you or inspire you comes about, you're ready to go. Yeah. And, and whoever, whoever it is, wherever you're starting, if in whatever career that you choose, there's someone that's going to be at the top. Find that person, talk to that person, sit with that person. Even if you're just like their shadow for the day, Yeah. figure out how they tick, figure out what makes them so successful in your profession. And I think if you look at the, the greatest of whoever it is in your company and your workspace, you're going to gain something from it. You can't, you're probably not gonna be able to copy and paste everything that they do, 
but it might be something that they're doing that you're not in a certain area that could change everything for you. No doubt. Well, Joe, I want to thank you so much for being here today. That was fantastic. I can't tell you how many insights that I picked up on just from that. And, and what's even crazier is that I know you personally. And so to learn new things, hear you communicate your journey in the way that you did, it, it was really, really inspiring. And I know there's tons of people at home that are going to be learning a lot from this. So I want to thank you for making that time to thanks, be here. Thanks for having me. It was, it was awesome, man. It was exciting. So. Absolutely. And everybody, I want to thank you for making the time to learn today, believing in the possibility that life can be better and challenging yourself to grow. I believe everybody's pursuing what they feel to be their dream life. And hopefully today you got one step closer. We'll see you next time and never stop pursuing precision. All right, everybody, that is going to conclude episode 11 with Joey Snips. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Truly had a blast sitting down and having open conversation about how he's been able to conduct his business and scale it to where it's at in such a short period of time. I'm going to now recap the top three things that I learned while sitting down with Joseph Lang. One, you cannot sit around and wait for others to validate your value. Now, through countless points in this interview, Joey described how he was more than willing and able to provide his services, provide his time, and give value and prove his worth without asking for any return. He cut hair to start for free. He did his internship with, uh, or his fellowship with a fellow barber on minimal pay and, and stayed and learned for over two years. He paid his dues. He didn't ask for much, and he proved his value before even thinking about charging significant amounts of money. Two, choose a path that you feel it's worth fighting through the inevitable adversity that you're going to face. No matter what you do, you're going to run into speed bumps along the way. You're going to run into situations where it's going to be difficult. You're going to have to do things that you do not want to do. And the only thing that's going to get you through those times are actually caring enough about what you're doing, the problem you're solving, the purpose you serve. That's the only thing that's going to push you through those times. And Joey talked countless times about his journey and when it, was, it came to schooling and doing the tests and doing all the things that he admitted were not his strong suits or things that he enjoyed by any means. But because he cared so much about what he did and the journey he was on, he was willing to suffer through those tough times. Three, spend more time thinking about the positives and the opportunities ahead of you in your career. The reason I bring this one up is because Joey does something that is very, very repetitive. And he talked a lot about there's a lot of burnout in his industry. There's a lot of people that do the same thing that he does that get tired of that repetitive action. And this can be relatable to so many other jobs or uh, situations that others could be in where they continue to do the same thing and all they think is, I just cut hair or I just type numbers into the keyboard, right? And what he chose to do instead is think about the big picture. Think about the positives to what he does, what it allows him to do from his lifestyle perspective, what he's providing to those that are coming into his space. He isn't just cutting hair. He's providing a positive environment, an opportunity for people to sit down and talk that maybe need to get some things off their chest, somewhere where they feel safe and somewhere where they can trust the person that they're going to just get 45 minutes to take a breather. And so he looks at the bigger picture and, and more of what he's doing as a whole and not just the simple task of cutting hair. All right, everybody, that is going to conclude episode 11. I want to thank you one last time for tuning in and staying all the way through this entire episode. I hope you took as much from this as I did. We cannot wait to see you again on the next one and never stop pursuing precision.